Hello everyone, let's solve another math problem. Show that the absolute value of sine x minus cos x is less than or equal to the square root of 2 for all x. Interesting. Okay, so let me write down what it is we're trying to show here. Less than or equal to the square root of 2. So my first instinct here was to actually try and do something geometrical, like uh, draw out uh, the unit circle and some triangles and compute some distances and that kind of thing. But um, I'm going to use a little bit of cheating knowledge here. The chapter of my calculus textbook that this came out of has to do with optimization. So what I might try and do instead is just find the maximum value of this function. Uh, and if the maximum value of this function is less than or equal to the square root of 2, then we're done. Um, so what might be the best way to do that? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize this function f. And hopefully we'll be able to show that uh, the maximum of f is less than or equal to the square root of 2. Then I'm going to minimize the function f and show that the minimum is greater than negative square root of 2. Um, okay, so if we want to maximize this, um, at any maximum, we know that f prime of x has to be equal to 0. So let's compute a derivative. Um, now, it's sufficient to only think of values between 0 and 2 pi, right? Um, because this function is just going to be periodic. Um, it, it might even be sufficient to only consider values of x between 0 and pi. But anyway, we'll allow x to be zero between 0 and 2 pi. And then I want to solve for all values of x in that range such that tan of x is equal to negative 1. Um, there's probably two values of this, right? So x can be equal to pi over 2 plus pi over 4, which is um, 3 pi over 4. That'll give us this point here. Okay, so if, if this, this angle here, if that's 3 pi over 4, then tan of 3 pi over 4 is equal to um, cosine x, and on the vertical axis we have sine x. Is that correct? When x is equal to 0, when the angle is equal to 0, cosine is equal to 1, and sine is equal to 0. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here. Um, 3 pi over 4, cosine x is some negative number, and sine x is some positive number, so the ratio is negative 1. Uh, this is one root, and the other root, x2, will be equal to 2 pi minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. Okay, so um, this function, this function itself will be sinusoidal. If you plotted it, it would, uh, it would be a sinusoid function. Um, you can show that also using angle sum formulas and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, the fact that I found two values of x which give us a derivative of 0 makes sense because one of these is going to give us a maximum and one of them is going to give us a minimum. So let me now evaluate the function at these two points. f of x1 is equal to sine of 3 pi over 4 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4. Oh goodness. Okay, well this using some identities, and maybe you can see this from the geometry here too. Um, there's this, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm considered this point here, right, where the angle is 3 pi over 4. So 
is the same as this point here, except one of the coordinates has been reflected. So this is the same as sine of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4. And this is equal to 1 over root 2. And this is equal to 1 over root 2. So I get 2 over root 2, which is equal to root 2. Okay. Um, if I go through the same thing with f of x2, sine of 7 pi over 4 minus cosine of 7 pi over 4, well now the coordinate that gets reflected is the other one. So this is equal to negative sine of pi over 4 minus cosine of pi over 4. I'm not going to do all the substitutions here, but this is going to be equal to negative square root of 2. Okay, so there were only two critical values of the function were uh, for values of x between 0 and 2 pi. That is, there's only two points, there's only two values of x where the derivative of f is 0. Uh, the function is continuous and periodic and nice. So, you know, these two values have to correspond to the global minimum and maximum. And so this tells us that um, f of x... is between the square root of 2 and negative square root of 2 for all values of x, which of course means that the absolute value of f is less than the square root of 2. And so we have shown what we were originally asked to show. Yeah, this was a nice problem. Um, you know, I was, of course, led, uh, I was given a little bit of a hint simply because of the fact that I know what chapter of my textbook this problem came from. But it might be nice to have tried figuring things out using, um, just using a diagram like this and seeing if we could show using just geometry on the unit circle uh, that this thing is bounded. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I would start with that, um, but it doesn't seem like it's something that would be completely impossible. Anyway, as it stands, if I find any mistakes or if I have more to say about this problem, I'll put them down into the description. Thanks for watching.